So in this video, we're going to be learning how to reset a user's password if they've forgotten it. So in some ways it's different and in some ways it's similar to the changing the user's password. And in fact, in this video, we're going to be using the change password page that we created in the last video to actually reset the user's password. So normally what happens whenever you reset your password is you put in your email address and then the website sends you an email and then you click a link on that email and it takes you to a special page you can reset your password securely. So that's what we're going to be learning how to do. So the first thing we need to do is create a new page called Forgot Password. And what we want to do is go to the index page and once again just copy and paste that. I don't think we'll need the logged in class so we can just delete that and we'll just delete all these. So the first thing we need to do is create a form. So there's our form, so let's just see what that looks like. There's our form, there's the text box we put the email in and then we click reset password to send the email. So the first thing we obviously need to do is check if the form has been submitted. And once the form has been submitted, we need to send the user an email. And this is the part where we would actually send the email and we could use PHP's mail function, but because we're running on a local computer, that won't actually work. So what we're gonna be doing is, for this video, we'll be leaving that out and we'll be coming back to it later. So for this video, we'll just print out the token and then we'll use that to reset the password. But whenever we actually go to put this on the internet, we're going to be sending the user an email because when we put it on a live server, uh, we can use the PHP mail function fine, but it doesn't work on a local computer without uh, some special modifications that would take too much time in the video. So where we would normally send the email, we're just going to print it out. So the first thing we need to do before we could even send the email is generate a token. And we've already done that on our login page. So we can literally just copy this and generate another token, a different type of token and paste it in here. So now we have our token generated and we need to store the token in the database. So we need to create a new database table. And we're gonna call our table password tokens. And it is pretty much identical to the login tokens table. So we have our token, we create a char, and the length of our other token in the login tokens table is like 64 characters. But because we're using SHA1 to actually hash the token, uh, that's only ever gonna be 40 characters long. So if we want, we could create 40 characters. But for consistency, I'll keep it at 64 in case we decide to ever change it. It just saves us an extra job in the future. So we'll hit enter there and we will put in the user ID underneath. That's gonna be an integer. Uh, we don't need to specify a length. And then if we go to the login tokens, you can see we wanna make the user ID unsigned. We don't want any of these to be null. And we want to set the token to unique. And we can do that by going down here to indexes, changing the key type to unique. And on the token field, we just click add. Make sure you don't put it on the user ID, otherwise it won't work. So now that we've created that table, it's identical to login tokens. It just has a different name. We're ready to actually insert our token into that table. So just like login, we're going to query the database and insert it into the tokens table. And we need to get the user ID. And because we are storing the user ID in the password tokens table, we need to actually query the database and get the user ID out of it. And we need to do that when the user isn't actually logged in. So we want to run another query called user underscore ID to be able to set a value to the user ID variable. And we want to run DB query and we need to select the user ID from the database based off of the email that we're given by the user. So here we're just selecting the user ID from users where the email is equal to whatever the user puts in the text box. And before we can do that, we need to get the email data from the text box and store that in the variable. So we do that by just creating a variable and saying email equals post email. And that corresponds to the name of the text box. And then once we've queried the database, we need to go through the results. There'll only be one result. We go to the zeroth item of the array of results because there's only one. Just like in the earlier video with login when we retrieve the ID. And then here we want to retrieve ID. So we're going to test this now and we're just going to echo email sent. And once again, in a future video, we'll be covering how to send the email with the token in it. So we're going to refresh and we're going to just put in the email I have associated with my account, francis at howcode.org. And we just want to click reset password. It says email sent. We check our database. And in password tokens, we have a new token. And just like before, we're using SHA1 to hash the token value because just like the login tokens, if we didn't hash that and someone broke in and they had a login token, that's as good as the user's password. 
And this is the same if we don't hash these tokens and someone was to break in. Having access to the reset password token is as good as having the user's password because all they need to do is pass that token to the reset password form and then they can change the user's password to anything they like. So now that we have the token in the database, we're gonna go over to our change password page and we're going to check if a get parameter has been passed and that parameter is gonna be the token. So we're looking for something like this. So if we see the token variable in the address bar, we know that we're gonna use the token to reset the user's password and we're not gonna ask them for their current password because they've obviously forgotten it. So we've already covered what happens if the user's logged in, but if the user's not logged in and they've forgotten their password, we're gonna go down here and instead of saying not logged in, what we're gonna do is we're going to check for the token being passed to the page. So we're gonna create a variable called token and it's gonna be equal to get token. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a query and that query is gonna check the token is valid. So what we've done is we've said select the user ID because we need the user ID to be able to change the user's password from password tokens where the token is equal to whatever the token that's passed to the pages. And we get that token and we convert it to SHA1 and compare it with the value in the database. So we're gonna say user ID is equal to the output of that query and just like usual, we wanna get the zeroth element from the array that's returned and only one element will exist in this array. And then we wanna go inside the array again and get the user underscore ID field. So now that we have the user ID, we wanna just copy and paste this query and we wanna change it to an if statement. So we're saying if the query returns successfully, then we're going to assign the user ID. Otherwise, kill the page and we'll say token invalid. So once we know the token's valid, we're going to allow the user to reset their password. So just like above, we're going to copy this and we'll just paste it in here. And we wanna change a couple of things. We wanna get rid of old password and we wanna remove this password verify function because we don't need it anymore. And we wanna remove the user ID assignment and we should be almost ready to go. And then up here, we wanna say, if is set get token, then we will run all this code. Otherwise, we'll say not logged in. So let's try and run this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is copy this and I'm going to change the token to an invalid one that isn't in the database. and we have a syntax error. So we just wanna remove one of these closing curly brackets and refresh, and now it says token invalid. If I paste in a correct token, an error because we're using SHA1 to hash the token before we compare it, but we got the token out of the database and that was already hashed. So what you need to do is get the unhashed version of the token. So whenever we go back to the forgotten password page and when we echo out email sent, we're also gonna echo out token, the un hashed version of the token. So once again, what we're gonna do is fill out the forgot password form. We're gonna click reset password. It says email sent and it passes us this token. This is the token that we would have been emailed had we set that up. We're gonna copy that and we're gonna pass that to this page and hit enter. And now it says we can change our password. Before we run this, what we wanna do is go back to here and we wanna remove this current password box if we've provided it with a valid token. So what we're gonna do is just add some PHP tags here. And then what we'll do beside them is say, if token is valid, then we'll echo that out. And then up here, what we'll do is create a variable called token is valid and set it equal to false. And then here we'll say, if the token is valid, we'll say token is valid equals true. And then we'll actually negate that. And then finally, what we wanna do is change the form action depending on whether or not we've provided them with a valid token. So we'll just change that with another set of PHP tags. Token is valid. If the token is not valid, we'll echo change password.php. And then else, if the token is valid, we'll echo change password.php, question mark token equals token. And then semicolon. And in PHP, when you use echo with single quotes to include a variable, you have to put single quote dot before the variable name and dot single quote after the variable name. So let's try that again. So here we are on our page. When we go to inspect element, we can see that the form action has indeed changed because we've provided it with a valid token. 
If I go and change one letter of this token, if I add a letter at the end of it, you can see it says token invalid. So what I'm gonna do is change the password to Francis. And if I go to our database, you can see there's the old password. I click change password. It says password changed successfully. And I refresh and you can see the password has just changed. So we've one more thing to do. Once we change the password, we wanna delete the token we've just created. So we wanna set DB query. So what we're doing is we're just saying delete from password tokens where user ID equals user ID and we're getting the user ID from up here. And what that does is once the user changes their password, we're gonna delete it from the password tokens table. So once again, I'm going to refresh and because this token hasn't been deleted, it's still valid. So I refresh and we can change the password again to test password. We can click change password. It says password changed successfully. I go to our users table, you can see there's the new password and I go to our password tokens table and you can see it's empty. So now if I refresh, this token will no longer be valid and it will give us an error. Now you can see it says invalid token. And if I delete the token completely and refresh, it says not logged in. And if I log in using the old password, which was password, it says incorrect password. And if I log in using the new one, which is test password, and I click log in, it says logged in. And I can see we're on change password.php and we just found a bug. So we're gonna go to line 73 and it says token is valid is not declared because we declared it in the else part of our if statement. So what we wanna do is just copy it from there and paste it above the login check. And now if I refresh, the errors disappeared. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. For the rest of the series, we're gonna be covering more topics such as sending emails, uploading profile pictures, adding people as friends, writing posts, things like that. So that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.